Hello everyone and welcome to this video on the Python programming language. So in this video I will attempt to predict the future price of the S&P 500 by using a linear regression trend line. Alright so I'm currently on Google's website it's called colab.research.google.com and I'm on it because it makes it really easy to start programming in Python. So all you have to do is go on this website and then log in using your Google account and get started writing your Python code. And all the code and the data set that will be used in this video will be put on patreon.com slash computer science and I will leave a link for that in the description below. Alright, so let's go ahead and get started. The first thing that you're going to want to do is click on file then click on new notebook where a new tab opens up and then eventually a new cell. Okay, and in this cell I'm going to put in a description about the program and comments. So I'm just going to type description and I'm just going to put predict the future price of the S&P 500. Okay, also before we start writing more code, if you like the videos on the channel, then be sure to click that subscribe and like button and to be notified about new videos from the channel, hit that bell notification. And the material in this video is purely educational and should not be taken as professional investment advice because I am not a professional investment advisor. So invest at your own discretion. Okay, so let's go ahead and continue. Let's create a new cell by clicking that code button in the top left. And then we're going to import the libraries that I plan on using throughout the program. So I'm going to import pandas as pd, and I'm going to import numpy as mp, and I'm going to import matplotlive.pyplot as plt. And let's see, from sklearn.linear model, I'm going to import linear regression and from sklearn.metrics I'm going to import r2 underscore score. Alright and then I'm going to give my plot a style so I'm just going to type plt.style.use and I'm going to use the 538 style. All right. So I'm going to go ahead and run this cell by clicking this button here to the left and this will let me know if I made any mistakes. Alright, so it looks like I'm good. And let's go ahead and create a new cell. Okay, so the first thing that I want to do is I want to load the data set that I plan on using. So to do that I'm going to use Google's library. So from google.colab I'm going to import files. Okay, and then I'm just going to type files.upload to upload the file. So let's go ahead and run this. Okay, and then we'll click on choose files. And I'm going to choose this smp500.csv file. Okay, so it's already loaded. I'm going to create a new cell. And now I'm going to store the data. Alright, so I'm going to create a variable called df and set it equal to pd.read underscore csv. And I'm going to read that smp, let's see, smp 500.csv file. Okay, and then I'm going to show the data. So I'm just going to type df here. So let's go ahead and run this and take a look at the data. Okay, so we can see that it contains a column for the date, the open price, the high price, the low price, the close price, the adjusted close price, and the volume. And the dates are from 12-21-2020 to 12-23-2021. And there are 255 rows of data and seven columns. Okay, so I'm going to change these indices here from integer values to the date values. All right, so let's go ahead and do that now. So I'm going to set the date as the index. All right, so just set df equal to df.set underscore index. All right, and then type pd dot date time index. All right, and then I'm going to just put in the date. So that's df date, and it needs to be an array. So I'm going to put dot values here, and let's run this again. Okay, and now the indices or the indexes have changed to be the date. Okay, so let's go ahead and create a new cell, and now in this cell. I'm going to plot the linear regression line. Okay, 
and the close price. All right, so first thing that I'm going to do is make a copy of the data set. So I'm going to create a new data set called DF. We we'll call it DF3, and I'm going to set it equal to DF dot copy. Really, it probably should be DF2. Let's go ahead and just make this DF2. It doesn't really matter. Let's make it DF3. Okay, so we're getting a copy of the data set, and next I'm going to create a new column called numbers. Okay, and this will range from zero to the length of the data set. So just type df3. I'm going to create this new column called numbers, and I'm going to set it equal to a list that ranges from zero to the length of our data set. Okay, so I think that looks good good okay so next I want to store the numbers column into a variable called and I'm going to call this variable X and I'm going to I'm going to store it as an array all right so let's go ahead and create that variable called X let's set it equal to df3 and I want the uh, not the close price I want uh, numbers right so df3 numbers and I need to um, add some more square brackets here and then I want to change this to an np array so np dot array Okay, and this is just so I can format the data properly to to put it into our model for training. Okay, all right. So next, I want to store the close price as an array as well, and I'm going to store it in a variable called let's call it y. We do a lowercase y. So I'm going to set y equal to df3 close dot values. Okay. All right. So now it's time to create and train the model. So I'm going to create a variable called lin model, short for a linear model. And I'm going to set this equal to linear regression dot fit. And fit is just a, another term for train. And we're going to train it on our data set X and Y. OK. All right, next, let's go ahead and create a print statement. So I want to print the intercept. So that's just going to be the linear model dot intercept and I think it's an underscore here oh, oh let's put that back okay and then I also want to print the slope okay and that's len underscore model dot coefficient with a underscore all right so if I did everything properly here then uh, these two print statements should work for us and everything should get trained so let's go ahead and run this all right so there we go we have our intercept and we have our slope so pretty cool all right so now that I have that let's go ahead and create a new cell and let's let's prepare the data for visualization okay and what I want to do is I want to get the predicted prices from the model and I'm going to store those prices into a variable and let's call the variable y underscore pred for y prediction 
and I'm going to set y underscore bread equal to our our linear model dot coefficient within underscore multiplied by our x data set plus the linear model dot intercept underscore and if this looks familiar to you that may be because this is the equation of a line y equals mx plus b right so our slope is m right here uh, here's our x and then um, here's b which is our intercept all right kind of cool right okay so it's very nice to see uh you know some some math coming in handy all right so what we're going to do is we're going to store the predicted values in a new column called bread and yeah I make it a capital P all right so let's get our DF3 data set let's create that new column called bread and it's going to hold the predictions so y underscore bread and then all that's left is to plot the data all right so let's type DF3 bread dot plot and df3 close dot plot and then let's give this plot a title so I'm going to type plt dot title and I'm going to put close price history okay and then let's go ahead and run this all right there we go so just like that we have our plot and we can see our model in blue right and then we see the close price in this in this orangish reddish color here. All right, so obviously the model is definitely not perfect, which is expected. It is a line, but it's relatively close, right? Okay, so let's go ahead and create a new cell, and let's see just how good the model really is. So how how good is the model all right so let's use the coefficient of determination to find out and the coefficient of determination or r squared helps to show the model's goodness of fit or how well the model fits the data all right so let's go ahead and use that r2 underscore score function and let's put in df3 we're going to put in the close price and then we're going to put in our df3 predicted prices okay so let's go ahead and run this okay so our model got a score of 0 0.938 and I'm not going to read all these out so I'm just going to round this to about 0 0.938 which is actually pretty decent um, the best possible score is one so not bad next let's go ahead and show the models possible price or let's show the let's show the possible price for the next day based on the model all right so I'm just going to type lin underscore model dot coefficient underscore times the length of our data set plus one and then I'm going to add the the intercept so lin lin underscore model dot intercept underscore all right so let's take a look here let's see so the model believes that the price of the S&P 500 for tomorrow will be four thousand seven hundred and thirty eight dollars and sixty four cents all right pretty cool right 
so of course this is just a model and models are not perfect but I hope that you found this video interesting and I hope you learned something cool and fun and that's the end of the video so to start an investment portfolio of your own you can click on the link below and get two free stocks valued up to $1,850 on Weeble when you deposit $100 or more and I also have a link for BlockFi where you can grab $10 worth of Bitcoin that will also be in the description below thanks for watching and thank you to the supporters supporting this channel on patreon.com slash computer science I truly appreciate it and again if you would like to be a supporter on patreon.com slash computer science I will leave a link for that in the description as well thank you all for watching and I hope you all have a wonderful fantastic day and I will see you in the next video see ya